So the presentation is on the simulation of switching over voltages and uh, validation of uh, also uh, field validations. Uh, so validation of line models and uh, validation of our simulation results with field measurements. So uh, I'm presenting the, uh, here uh, this, um, uh, this presentation, but uh, there have been many people working uh, under uh, this uh, project because uh, this was uh, done within uh, the scope of a working group uh, called Field Measured Over Voltages. So um, many people have contributed to this, uh, to this work. So uh, switching over voltages is a classic subject, right? It is, uh, it is just, uh, we know this for many years and we know that EMTP can be used for these things. What is the breakthrough in this work? The breakthrough is in terms of precision between field measurements and simulation results. And, and also in terms of identification of factors affecting uh, the level of precision. Uh, this will be a clear um, uh, with, with uh, the simulation results and the, when I show the problems associated with this, uh, pre, with this uh, working group. So the background is uh, uh, in November, on November 14th, BPA had an experience. They had a series of flashover. It was during a high-speed reclosing maneuver on a transmission line they have. It's a 230 kV line. So the thing is, if you have high speed reclosing on a line, and if the line has trapped charge, in this case, uh, you can observe high over voltages. And if you don't have uh, measures to mitigate switching surges, such as uh, closing resistors and surge arresters, uh, in this case, of course, the over voltages will be even more serious. So uh, the thing is, what they have measured was above three per unit. And of course, this may trigger flashover on the rod gaps. So then, uh, after that incident, uh, because of concerns, uh, safety-related concerns about high voltages, as you know, there is uh, right now uh, transmission lines run in parallel. And uh, it is important in terms of safety, clearance distances. These are important things to figure out. So you need to know uh, the over voltages. So in 1995, BPA did some investigations. What does that? They did a series of field tests to record over voltages and uh, statistical data d during high speed reclosing. So what is the system? We can see the system here. Basically, you have this uh, a portion of their power system. And the big eddy, Chemawa line is here. Big Eddie is the name of a cowboy uh, that li who lived uh, in this uh, region, part of uh, the United States. Uh, so basically what they do is, this is an open line, you know, they, they do high speed reclosing, and then uh, they measure the over voltages here. You have two ends, Big Eddie and Chemawa ends. So basically they do measurements. Okay, this line is 116 miles. Uh, so, if you look at the line, uh, of course, it is just not a single line running. You know, you have uh, parallel lines, too many lines here. Uh, so, you need to model all these things uh, to obtain good results. Um, so, basically, uh, you can use, of course, the library of EMTP for line models. This is not a problem. Uh, so what we have as input is, okay, we have this configuration, and also we have the physical parameters of conductors and the physical layout of the transmission line. And based on these things, we can do our modeling. So we have single and double circuits. We have parallel lines and everything. So what is the objective of this working group? Uh, the objective of this working group is what are the simulation pr uh, practices to reproduce the field measurement in EMT type simulations, okay? Uh, to reproduce switching over voltages. And uh, what about line models? Are they precise enough? Uh, can I use constant parameters, frequency dependent parameters? What should I do? What is uh, wrong if I use constant parameters? Um, what is the precision level that I can have with frequency dependence and so on? So discussion on modeling approaches, simulation practices, and sensitivity to electrical parameters, skin effect, uh, it is, uh, name it, you know, ground resistance. Uh, uh, so what will be the um, impact on our results? And of course, to evaluate maximum over voltages. 
so the peak over voltages, why? Because this is for safety related purposes, such as minimum approach distance and clearance practices. In the US, these are very important because uh, most of the lines are parallel, so uh, that's that why they need to figure out um, uh, the over voltages precisely. And afterwards, how do we perform statistical simulations? How do you model press strike and include corona in statistical simulations efficiently? Uh, press strike is obvious because uh, when you have trapped charge here on that line and when the breaker here is closing, of course, uh, depending on the pulse pan, uh, they, there may be a strike before the switch closes, right? And this strike uh, will continue until uh, current passes zero. So until uh, um, zero cross. So uh, definitely you have to also consider press strike when you're, uh, you're working on reproducing the waveform. If you don't consider this arc, this press strike, uh, you cannot really reproduce the waveform. Okay, these are... Um, some factors. So we need to. We wanted to know all these things, you know, figure out and uh, solve the mystery. So switching over voltages, they exist for a very long time. We know that uh, EMTP first was used for these purposes. Uh, but the thing is, uh, the thing is, you know, uh, we have these field measurements, and they did a good job. You know, it is. Uh, at first, we said maybe uh, EMTP simulations are correct, but uh, they did a very bad job. Uh, in the field and the measurements are not are bad, but no, these are experts. They are really experimental people and they have good measurements and uh, they know what they are doing. Uh, they take into account high frequency and everything in their measurements. So, uh, so the thing is, uh, we, we do a number of things, right? We uh, use frequency dependent line models, we play with ground resistivity, we play with Sikin effect, we play with shunt conductance, we consider parallel lines, and the source side detail, instead of using a simple source model, we use a detailed source model, we model everything behind the, uh, behind the big eddy bus. But, uh, but it is, uh, we were unsuccessful, uh, uh, actually to decrease the difference between the field measurements and the higher simulation over voltages. So uh, simulation results in EMTP were overestimating uh, the, the uh, measured over voltages. So uh, I will give the conclusion right away. Okay, I will have many small conclusions along my presentation. So uh, instead of showing all the simulation results and doing a little bit of suspense, I don't think uh, it is time for that. So the thing is, uh, we could match the pattern of the transient voltage waveforms with frequency dependent line models and press strike. Uh, inclusion of press strike. But the magnitude uh, is significantly overestimated unless the effect of corona is considered. You know. In this particular case, it's a 230 kV line, you may say corona should not be that important. But we are reclosing on trapped charge. When you are reclosing on trapped charge, you can have very, very high uh, uh, over voltages uh, in the order of 3 PU because of the difference between your trap charge and the system voltage, you know. It is, uh, for that reason, you need to consider corona. If you had, for example, mitigation, such as closing resistors or search arresters, in that case, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe even if you don't consider corona, your results would be fine. But in that case, this line had no uh, mitigation for uh, over voltages, so. So the little bit outline of the measurements, what they, done, uh, what they did. So they, they, uh, they had waveforms and three-phase line switching test series. And then uh, without staging of creating a stage fault, they did three-phase trip and reclose tests. So this gives you a feeling of high-speed reclosing. Uh, one end is open, the other end is open. So you're closing, you're just reclosing and tripping. And, and, uh, and this gives you uh, uh, some uh, measurements that are very useful in, in doing these uh, validation studies. Once we uh, validate our line model, we can proceed with statistical simulation phase. Why do we do statistical simulation phase? Because, you know, when you have a three-phase switch, uh, poles, they don't close at the same time. You know, there's a little bit of variation. And this may have an impact on the over voltage. Another thing is the closing time has an impact on the peak over voltage. We all know this, you know, it is, uh, it is a circuit, it is simple. So that's why uh, the, with statistical studies, we can catch the maximum over voltage, you know. 
but first we need to uh, really uh, validate our line model. So I think I made an introduction, and I think I described the test system as well. I showed the system, and uh, we have a line, and we are uh, closing on that line. And uh, I will now give some modeling details and parameters of the test system. Then I will show simulation results. Then we'll discuss a little bit on the sensitivity of simulation results to line parameters. And then we'll see the effect of corona using two different corona models. One of them is a linear model, the other one is a Sulci model. And then, uh, and then I will very quickly talk about statistical studies because I have uh, 20 maybe uh, uh, more slides, but I will just show a few slides, okay, not more. It, then we'll have some conclusions, but uh, uh, recapitulation of uh, the conclusions uh, that, uh, that we'll do uh, uh, throughout this uh, presentation.